Hey folks, welcome to Market Technical Analysis by InTheMoneyStocks.com for Wednesday, January 9th, 2008. Well, the markets came to us today, and it was a massive battle across the boards in the markets. And they were down, almost out, but before they tapped, there was a major short squeeze technical bounce rally that occurred. And those of you that have been with us for multiple videos now know that we yesterday we altered our position to a more neutral bias, expecting a bounce, and that's exactly what we got today. And it didn't look like that was going to happen for much of the day as the markets came and the NASDAQ was as, as low as 30 points lower at one point today. But we noticed a positive divergence in the chat room today on the NASDAQ. And literally within minutes, a squeeze, a rally, a push-up began in the markets that catapulted the NASDAQ to close up 34 points today, or 1.4%. Uh, it was over a 60-point reversal from the lows. The Dow was up 146 points, and the S&P was up almost 19 points. So let's get right into it today, because wow, what a day. Here's the S&P, uh, the ES minis, folks, and this is the intraday, and I want to start with the intraday today before we get into the odds and ends with the technicals, because I want to really go over here what's going on, all right, and we'll close that out for now. So we had a very wishy-washy day early, but by the early afternoon, we started to sell off pretty hard, and you can see here, you can see the markets were basically trending up early, and this is about 5 in the morning on the East Coast. And then we started to trend lower. And this is, again, very, very light volume. The market opened. We got a small push up and then a little zigzag pattern, a possible M formation here. All right. And then look at what happened here. We got the M formation and then the A formation. And then you get the push down of the A. All right. So you got an MA pattern here. Now, the key here, folks, is we had this little doji candle right here. And you can see how it closed in the middle of that candle after being up and down both ways and then off to the races. And I'll show you the NASDAQ um, chart in a second and show the positive divergence. But this is right where we were talking about where the NASDAQ was down about 30 and the markets were kind of looking like they were going to collapse even further. And we were talking, well, maybe we hit August lows now. Uh, excuse me, yeah, August, very low in August, which was on the NASDAQ 2386. And we did get as low as 14.12, and it looked like we were going to test that 14, uh, excuse me, we got as low on the NASDAQ as 24, 2400 and change. And it looked like we were going to come down and touch that 2400 mark right to the button, and that would be the support area before we hit that August low of 23.86. But instead, we saw a massive rally up, a basic short squeeze nonstop move up to close out the day. And this was so long overdue, and I'm going to switch to the NASDAQ chart now to show you guys the intraday here. And I want to just show you this, all right? Take a look. It's a very top, tough to see on this stochastic. My stochastics are very small here. But you basically have a stochastic right here, okay? Flat top to slightly higher stochastic right here while the charts were moving down here, all right? In addition, once you form this little candle right here with that close right in the middle, and you got this push up, that's the signal, all right? And what a rally you got here. Um, you talk about a nice solid rally, and it was just a tremendous rally. And again, yesterday in the video, we said, listen, you got you to expect a bounce here. Technically, we're ready for a bounce. That's what we got today now, and we have gotten that bounce. Now, you have to assume, let's look at the daily, all right? Now, look at this candle, a beautiful bottoming tail now, formation. If we can confirm this move up, and I think we probably do have a, a little bit more of a bounce tomorrow, at least early in the markets, and I'm going to touch on this in a minute, then you have to assume we bounce for at least a day or two uh, more at, uh, to get us a little higher before another leg down. Now, you guys who have been watching the videos, and I really do appreciate all you guys following along, and I hope you guys are learning stuff with it. Notice the M pattern here on the NASDAQ, and this is across the board on the S&P. You name it, it's been basically formed. All right, Beautiful M pattern here, and we've been kept on saying is when you get this technical bounce here, you got to expect the A formation on an MA pattern in the market. So could this be the start of the A pattern? Because if it is, then you maybe have a small bounce up like this, and then the next sell pressure comes in and we spike lower, and the A finishes the pattern on a big move down, probably taking out August lows and going back on the NASDAQ to March lows. And March lows, if I remember correctly, is around 2335-ish, give or take. That's not exact, but it's right in that range of a couple points. 
So that's another from where we ended today, basically a 150 point drop from wherever we are here down to that point. And that may be the end of this move or we may go lower. Um, who knows? We'll have to reevaluate once we get to those March lows. But inevitably, inevitably we've hit that basic low now. And I'm just going to flip back here, folks, because I want to just show you. Here's the August low. All right. And we can even draw a little uh, line across. And unfortunately, the screen here that we're using is a little too small to really go into any super details. But now let's go all the way over here. And we're going to talk a little bit more about the August low. Okay. So now I've extended the chart all the way over in the line, and here's March lows. So now you can see how, how much of a difference from the August low, which we almost tested today, to now to the, to the March lows. And this is ultimately where we're going to go, I think, and it's a matter of how long. Do we bounce for three days? Do we bounce for a week here? Or does Bernanke, who, again, I said I was going to mention something, Bernanke's talking tomorrow, all right? So here we're going back to, to today. So Bernanke... I have to believe, folks, and you guys know I said this yesterday, I said that I think they cut rates or there's a stimulus package before the January, late January meeting, and I think the January meeting is on the 31st for the Fed, and I have to say, I would be shocked if they don't cut before that, and I think today was a partial short covering rally, as they expect Bernanke to speak tomorrow and possibly say something. Now, if he says nothing, and if he doesn't give any inkling into a possible cut, then I think you see the markets possibly sell off again. But in all likelihood, I have to believe that something coming out in the next week, and I do think the Fed will cut before the 31st meeting, and all in all, if they do a 50 basis point cut here before the meeting, and maybe another 25 at the meeting, the markets could get a nice rally into that. And we could form that A pattern before the A, the, the a completes and drops back lower. Now let's be honest, folks. When you're dealing with rate cuts, it takes 6 to 12 months to get in the system anyway, so it's not going to fix anything now. It's, it's more psychological. All right, you cut rates psychologically, you know you'll be better off in the long run, or so people think. Now, whether or not that's true when the dollar continues to decline and all this junk, that's another story. But for now, you got to look at the psychology of the markets, and the market's begging for a rate cut. Okay, They're begging for an emergency rate cut, a stimulus package, and whatnot. All right, So let's go back here and just talk a little bit about some things that went on. When this market started to turn around, Goldman Sachs, huge rally. Look at this rally here. This is the intraday chart on Goldman right up like that. Now let's look at Merrill Lynch. Look at this rally on Merrill Lynch. And guys, one thing I want to point out, I'm going to draw a parallel here from August. All right, the August lows, and let's go back to the NASDAQ so we can actually view this again. Does everyone remember what happened uh, in the August lows? All right, here's the August low, right? So here's the line we drew from August lows, and this is the, this is the August lows. Now we sold off hard intraday, and then in the middle of the day or the early afternoon, we had a huge rally just kind of like today. It wasn't as dramatic as today, but you guys all remember what happened the next morning. It was options expiration. The next morning, the Fed comes out and cuts the discount rate, a surprise cut before, and then that's, we basically looked back and saw, wow, look at the financials. They rallied, they rallied on this day here. That's part of what took it off. And then obviously the Fed came out the next day and cut rates. And you got to figure that some little news leaked out of the Fed, you know, someone knew, obviously. That's the point being. And I don't mean to draw too many parallels here, but frankly, yes, I do actually mean to draw a parallel. So could this move here be somewhat of the same type of move here on the daily chart of Goldman Sachs? On Merrill Lynch right here, could this move up be that same type of move? Are, are we anticipating a cut tomorrow? And the time will tell, folks. We'll know tomorrow. We'll know in the next few days. I'm not necessarily saying it's going to happen tomorrow, but I do think something happens to say or to, to attempt to, to appease the market from this massive sell-off, and I think that's why the bounces are occurring here and the short squeeze, all right? So here's, again, the Merrill Lynch move up today. You can show look at any chart here. Uh, I'll just bring up MasterCard. What the heck? Let's see what MasterCard did. Look at the rally there on MasterCard, and um, overall tremendous. Also, tech stocks. Look at Apple. Look at the move up on Apple here. A beautiful little almost W pattern here stretching to yesterday on Apple. Double bottom right there, and look at that move up. Uh, Research in Motion was getting pounded today early, and then closed, closing up $2 on this late-time rally. So the point being here, folks, come join the chat room. We discuss all this. It's crazy days when we, when we have these type of moves in there, and it is fun as can be. It's exhausting, frankly, but it is a good time as can be. Now, again, let's look at the NASDAQ here. Let's look at the SPY. We haven't looked at the SPY, which, has, which represents the S&P. And you can see this dramatic rally late in the day again, folks. But what I want to focus in on here is the chart right here, okay? Here we have 
the, the reversal today, and again, you have that bottoming tail formation. And this is a, a big formation all across the board, all right? Any chart you look at on the daily has this to almost to a T. Look at the research in motion daily chart. Bottoming tail, closing in the upper areas. Actually, at the high of the day, it closed. Uh, Apple, same type of thing. Little bottoming tail, but it closed just so powerfully here. Apple was up $8 today. Huge move on Apple. Look at First Solar, some of these solar plays. Is that a beautiful uh, pattern right here? It pierces the 50 moving average, but goes below and then closes near the highs of the day on a bottoming tail. Now, I'm not a big fan of these solars. I think they're a little overextended. I think they will bounce back, but the margins on these stocks, are just too many companies out there. The margins are going to get squeezed eventually. So, yes, it's probably good for a bounce, but I wouldn't look for new highs or anything like that personally. All right, folks, be ready. Come join the chat. Craziness going on. This market is fun as can be. Come analyze stocks with us in the chat room. We'll get some more tomorrow. There's going to be crazy day tomorrow. Have a wonderful evening, folks. We'll talk to you soon.